Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. Uh, welcome to 2016. I'm going to continue. We're almost finished reading this book, Poison Power, by Dr. John Goffman and Arthur Tamplin. The t subtitle of the book is quite telling, The Case Against Nuclear Power Plants. Uh, we are on, I think, chapter 11 now, and we're on page 261. I believe this is chapter 11. And the, the title of it, Must We Hold Out for the Cold Corpses? And evidently, the answer was yes, we do. And even when we have cold corpses, nobody cares. Right now we have St. Louis, people dying in St. Louis. We have thousands of people. The government hasn't even kept track of who's dying from the nuclear radiation from the Manhattan Project. So here we are, page 261, first paragraph on the page. We are not concerned with mistaken notions of the past, but of the present. Dr. Walter Jordan is a physicist and assistant director of the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, a leading nuclear science and engineering laboratory. The same place that's telling us right now that Fukushima had minimal radiation poured into the Pacific in 2011. Recently, May of 1970, in an article on nuclear electric power for the journal Physics Today, Dr. Jordan expressed his impatience with those who are concerned about the hazards of nuclear electricity generation. Dr. Jordan agreed there may be a hazard, but it is surely worth the risk. No, it's not, Dr. Jordan. No. We would honor Dr. Jordan's privilege to express this opinion in any event, not me. But we are horrified upon reading his article to learn that he has no concept at all concerning the cancer leukemia risk. For Dr. Jordan states in his article that exposure to 30 times the allowable annual dose of 0.17 rad will lead to no physical effects upon the exposed individuals. Of course, Dr. Jordan cites no evidence for his back for, to back his reassuring statement. Let us explain to Dr. Jordan what a population exposure of 30 times the allowable dose would amount to in extra cancer plus leukemia deaths annually in the United States. Our estimate would be 960,000 extra deaths per year. Professor Pauling's estimate would be three times higher, or 2,880,000 extra deaths per year. Even a lower estimate ascribed to R. H. Mole of the British Atomic Energy Authority would lead to 210,000 extra deaths annually. Would Dr. Jordan consider 210,000 to 2,880,000 extra deaths annually to represent no physical effect? Far more frightening is Dr. Jordan's recent appointment to the Atomic Energy Commission's Atomic Safety and Licensing Board Panel. In this position, he will help review applications for the licensing of construction and operation of new nuclear electricity generating plants. So Dr. Jordan is one of the murderers. He's one of the murderers, and I'm super angry. I'll be honest, like... This is why I can't read this book anymore, you guys, every day, because it's just infuriating. These guys are worse than Mengele. It's unbelievable. Here we have a man, obviously competent in his own field of physics and engineering, totally oblivious to the real hazards of radiation for humans. No, he's not. He's a fucking murderer. Excuse my cussing. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to cuss. This man will be passing upon radiation this man will be passing upon radiation safety and related matters for nuclear electricity installations he will also sit on public hearing boards to listen to any public protests and concerns re about the hazards of such plants Many nuclear reactor industry spokesmen and AEC officials have decried the quote alarmism unquote, associated with the estimates of leukemia and cancer risk from radiation, although there is not a shred of evidence they can offer in refutation of the estimates. It is not the estimates of the cancer and leukemia hazard from radiation that should alarm the public. But the public should be extremely alarmed that the members of the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board are totally oblivious to the real magnitude of the radiation hazard. 
As late as 1969, the chairman of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy expressed his opinion that there existed a margin of safety of 100 times in the allowable radiation doses for the public. What do we expect? The Joint Committee on Atomic Energy is military. They kill people all the time. If the sound public... If the sound public health principles have been descri have described, excuse me, I'm going to read that again. If the sound public health principles have described had been applied, we would have averted today's sad state of affairs. He didn't even know. Imagine if he was alive today. Physicists, engineers, and utility executives could have been made aware of the true hazard of ionizing radiation. The rash proliferation of the nuclear electricity industry would surely not have occurred in a manner at, at ha that it has. The electric utility industry is a highly responsible one. Bullshit. It is a matter of great concern that was that it was so badly misled. They are not badly misled. They knew exactly what they were doing, Dr. Goffman, and you gave them way too much slack. Considering the magnitude of the stakes involved for the public, for industry, and the nation's future, it is imperative that sound public health practices be introduced into the nuclear electricity industry, especially since the hour is late for constructive action. God, are we, I think we're almost past it. It is perfectly appropriate for a group of scientists with expertise in a particular field to provide estimates of the risk of serious disease as a result of potential expo exposure to environmental pollutants. In doing so, it is essential that the sound pup, that sound hu Excuse me. In doing so, it is essential that the sound public health principles described above be applied in making the estimate of hazard. At all times, a conservative approach, erring where uncertainty exists in favor of the public health, is essential. Here, the responsibility of the scientist, a scientist, should end. So I'm going to read that again. Here, the responsibility of the scientist as a scientist should end. The only appropriate standard for pollution is zero until negotiated away from zero for a very good reason. Expert scientists operating behind closed doors are in no way an appropriate body to make such negotiations or to set any, quote, standards, unquote. The negotiation away from zero, zero as an appropriate pollution level must necessarily involve a broad segment of society. For in deciding to allow a negotiated pollution, society at large is accepting a hazard to health in current and future generations. Society as a whole must make the determination of whether the hazards are truly offset by projected benefits. The sole control over the health of humans and the quality of the environment can no longer be left in the hands of, quote, experts, unquote. Such control must be carefully guarded and exercised by an informed public. Wow, so we're the informed public and we're being summarily ignored. I'm going to stop. We are at the chapter, end of chapter 11. The new chapter is titled Toward an Adversary System of Scientific Inquiry. And so that is exactly, that's exactly what we did. Ran the train full steam ahead. So I'm going to end here, try to get this out today, you guys. I'm sorry I'm angry about this, but there is, I think it's an appropriate response. This is outrageous. The more I'm covering this thing that's going on in St. Louis, the more angry I get for lots of reasons. And I'm going to make a second video on that. Try you guys, put your courage feet on and take action. Educate our elected officials. Let them know that we have the scientific data that proves that radiation is harmful, that proves that the people of St. Louis, at Everybody around every single nuclear power plant is in imminent threat. It's outrageous. Ciao, you guys.